But let's talk about asynchronous binary counters and specifically a two bit asynchronous binary counter. Uh, notice that the clock of this binary counter is only connected to the first flip flop FF0. Flip flop 1 is triggered by not Q0 of flip flop 0. Flip flop 1 only changes state at the positive going transition of not q0 of ff0 because of the inherent propagation delay time through a flip-flop a transition of the input clock pulse and a transition of not q0 output of flip-flop 0 can never occur at exactly the same time therefore the flip-flops are never triggered at the same time so the counter is asynchronous so let us quickly have a look and discuss the timing diagram for this specific counter. Uh, both of the flip-flops are connected in the toggle mode. J and both of their J's and K's are connected to high. That puts them in the toggle mode. And we initially assume that it is in the reset state, which means that Q0 and Q1 uh, both have the value of zero. We also know that these flip-flops are positive edge triggered flip-flops. There is no bubble uh, on indicated on the clock input, which means that it's a positive edge triggered flip-flop. That means that the, this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge over there will toggle flip-flop zero. See, on that edge, a so flip-flop zero starts off where Q is a zero, toggles to a one, the rising edge, it toggles. Each of these rising edges, it now toggles and creates an output signal like that. And not Q0 is the opposite of Q0, uh, so that's quite easy to recreate. We also know since not Q0 is the clock input for flip flop 1, flip flop 1 will only trigger on the rising edges of not Q0. The rising edges of not Q0 is this one over there and that edge over there. Now it becomes easy to recreate the Q1 output. Q1 starts at 0 and every time that there is a rising edge on not Q0, it toggles. Rising edge over there and there is a rising edge over there. We can verify this timing diagram easily enough by writing in the logic level of each of the outputs in different, at different uh, times. 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And you can then see that that is 0 decimal, that is 1 decimal, that is 2 decimal, and that is 3 decimal. Creating the timing diagram for a 3-bit asynchronous binary counter follows the same steps as for the 2-bit asynchronous binary counter. We will start at Q0. Q0 is the Q output of flip-flop 0, and flip-flop 0 is triggered by the external clock input. Flip-flop 0 is a positive edge trigger device, which means that on, on every positive edge of its clock source, it will toggle its state. Q0 starts off at 0, it toggles on every rising edge. Q0 will then toggle its state. Flip-flop 1 is also a positive going or positive edge trigger device, but its clock source is not Q0. Now, since it needs a positive going edge in order to trigger and not Q, it's connected to not Q0, it means that the falling edge of Q0 is going to be the rising edge of not Q0. So the falling edge of Q0, falling edge of Q0, falling edge of Q0, the falling edge, and the falling edge is going to toggle Q1 output. So Q1 starts off at 0, it toggles, toggles on each one of these rising edges. For flip-flop 3, sorry, for flip-flop 2, we see that flip-flop 2 is also a positive edge trigger device. And its clock is connected to not Q1. So to get a rising edge on not Q1, we need to find the falling edges of Q1. The falling edges of Q1 is that one there, 
that edge there. So on each of the falling edges of Q1, we will have a rising edge on not Q1, which will trigger flip-flop 2 toggling Q2. Q2 will toggle over there, and it will toggle over there. You can verify this by writing in, writing down the logic, the values of the logic levels between different clock passes. One zero zero, there we have zero one zero, one one zero, zero zero one, one zero one, zero one one, and one one one. And you can see from from the numbers over there that this will give you your eight states, counting from zero up to seven, five, six, and seven. And at the eighth clock pulse, you will have a natural recycle back to zero.